All right, so to dive in, Thank you all for coming. This is all about how to feel less anxious. And really, the bottom line for you to leave with is that anxiety is a feeling. And that sounds pretty basic, <laughs> but it's so important for us to know because all a feeling is is a vibration in our body. It's chemicals being released. It's energy vibrating through us. That's all it is. So it's harmless until we make it into something, until we make it mean something drastic. And so on this webinar, you'll be getting tools for how to uh, respond to anxiety when you have it, and also how to help yourself feel less of it moving forward. And I'll also give you the opportunity for a free consultation with me. That's one hour call free, completely about you and your mind. And we'll talk about what that looks like at the end. So if that is something you're interested in, make sure to hang tight until the end, because that is where you'll get the information on how to get that free call. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my slides now because I personally am a pretty visual person and think it helps to have something uh, when you're taking an in information to follow along with. And so I will share those now. All right, let's see here. If somebody in the Q&A could just let me know that you can see those slides, that way we know that you have the information that you've been wanting. Perfect, okay. Let's see here, I'm pulling up that Q&A. You can see it, perfect, thank you, thank you. Multiple people saying they can see it, wonderful. So let's get started. All right, so here's where we're going to begin. We're gonna start by talking about what anxiety is and where it comes from. And the reason we're starting there, and we're not gonna spend long here, but the reason we're starting there is because we wanna make sure we're all on the same page. We have that same foundation of what we mean when we're talking about anxiety. And if we know where it comes from, then we can know how to respond to it better we won't spend much time there. Where we'll go next is how to respond to anxiety. There's four different ways we tend to respond. And three of those aren't always the most helpful, but we don't always know that, right? They don't teach us this in school. So a lot of times we just react and we respond, but we don't know how to respond in a way that's helpful. There's one way that I've found that is so helpful in order to respond to anxiety. And the other three often can maybe in the moment feel better, but in the long run, just make us more anxious. And I don't want that for you. I'm assuming you don't want that for you either. So we'll really talk about those four, honing in on that last one. And then, and this is where we'll spend the bulk of our time today. We're going to be talking about strategies to feel less of it. And where to start, because I don't want you to leave just getting a bunch of strategies and have no direction forward, because that might lead to more anxiety, right? <laughs> Which is the one thing we're trying to avoid here. So we'll talk about specific strategies to feel less anxious. And we'll also talk about where you can start so that you can uh, be taking action on that. All right. Now you might be wondering, who am I? <laughs> Why am I the one sharing this with you? And so it's so good to meet you all. My name is Lisa. I am a certified life coach through the Life Coach School. And I also have a master's in psychology. And I use those together to help myself and my clients to feel less anxious. And so I'll be sharing a lot about my story just throughout this webinar. But really what it comes down to is this subject I hold so near and dear to my heart because I was struggling with anxiety for so long. I remember what it's like to feel like there's no way out, like you're trapped, like there's no escape, and like you're not in control of your life. Anxiety is controlling you. And so I've done the work. I found a way through that. And I'm not saying that I don't ever feel anxious because I am a human. <laughs> we all have human brains. So the goal here is not to never feel anxiety, but it's to know how to manage it when it comes up. And also a lot of us are feeling unnecessary anxiety anxiety that comes because we're fueling these thoughts that keep it happening instead of knowing how to stop it. And so we can take back control of our emotions and of our life. And this webinar will give you some 
great steps to do that. And this is also what I work with my clients on to help them feel less anxious. All right. So let's dive in. And we're going to start with that first piece, which was all about what anxiety is. So what is it? So take a moment in the Q&A, go ahead and place in there what it is that you think anxiety is. It just helps us to get an idea of where we're at, what we're thinking. And also, yes, Sharon, thanks for letting me know. And yes, uh, we will have a replay for those who are here so that they can see it. All right. Yes. So Sandra is sharing fear. It's fear. It's this, this fear within us that we have. And often if we think about it, we like to label things as anxiety, almost to the point where it can start to feel like everything is anxiety. When we're an anxious we're someone who has a lot of anxiety, we start to think, oh, I'm anxious. Oh, I'm anxious. We make everything into anxiety. So it helps to know what it is. So it's a fear. And what is fear? Well, it's a feeling. It's a feeling within us. So then the next natural question becomes, okay, well, where do our feelings come from? Why do I feel anxious? So let's take a moment to look at what that looks like. We have this feeling of anxiety but it doesn't just happen. What happens is we take in these inputs from the world, what we see, what we smell, what we hear, what we're thinking, our past programming, um, our past beliefs, the, the things people have told us, the situations that we're in, all of that comes into us. It's like these inputs that are coming in. But then there's something that happens between the situation that we're in and the feeling. And that's really what creates the anxiety. And it's our thoughts and then our physiology as well. So when I say physiology, what I'm saying is that we are born with ourselves <laughs> and we have this baseline, right? This, this chemical baseline for how we show up. And so I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a doctor here and I'm not here to give medical advice. So if you're wanting to know if medication makes sense for you, uh, what approach you should take that way, uh, this is not the space to get information on that. I'm not the person to help you with that. What I am here to help you with though, is the fact that that baseline that you're born with, that's just one piece. And there is so much we can do to influence it and impact it. Because yes, you have chemicals that create anxiety. And some of us are born uh, with different um, equations or recipes, so to speak, for what that looks like within our heads, within our brains. But there's so much we can do to impact that at the physiological level and at the level of thought. And those together create that feeling of anxiety. So you take in your input and you have a thought about it a thought about the situation that you're in. Maybe it's, oh, I'm so nervous. Maybe it's, I hate public speaking. Maybe it's, what if I fail? Whatever it is, that thought comes in and it triggers a physiological response within you. Those are the chemicals that are released in your body. And it results in you labeling the feeling, the physical sensations you're having in your body, you label as anxiety. So that's what's happening. That's how we get anxious. So then that helps us to see there's three different places of impact here. So I'm, can I use, I apologize. I was trying to use a, a fancy laser tool and it didn't, it didn't pull up. But what I'll share is if we look at that down arrow on the top, that's the circumstance that we're in. That's the situation that we're in. And so we can feel less anxious by changing the places we go. So if we get nervous public speaking, don't go to events where you're public speaking. If we get nervous going to networking events, just don't go to networking events. But if this is the way we lead our life, pretty soon there's, we start to run out of things that we can do and experiences we can have. And that puts us in complete victim mode where anxiety is running our life because we're literally determining what we do based on when and where we tend to feel anxious. Okay, so then we wonder if we don't want to influence at the level of the circumstance, which is that down arrow that you see, then we have these two other places, our thoughts and our physiology. So I'm going to talk about physiology first, because I mentioned that idea of a baseline, that we have this chemical baseline. 
What I'd also like to share, though, is uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton in his book, Biology of Belief. He's a molecular biologist, and he talks about how our cells, the very cells that make us up, are influenced by what we think, by how we believe. So what we're saying is the actual cells within us, the way our, that they're expressed and that our genes are expressed are impacted by the way we think. So even if we have a baseline that makes us tend toward anxiety, our thoughts, our beliefs can still influence how those genes are expressed, which means we get to be in so much more control than so many of us think. There's so much we can impact. And so I'll share some strategies to continue impacting the physiology, but really what this is showing us is that that main thing for us to do, our main point of impact is our thoughts. And I'm not talking about positive thinking here. There's a way to positive think that can help, and there's a way to positive think that can actually make us feel so much more nervous, so much more anxious. And so I don't like to focus on this idea of just think positive, because I actually don't find that to help. What I've found is this idea of how to create thoughts on purpose. And there's a lot in psychology about this and in spirituality about this. And so we'll be sharing some of those strategies here. And this is also uh, what I work with clients on as well. So for us to know that though, we have the circumstance happens. We have thoughts in that creates this chemical response within us, and we label that as anxiety. That's how we feel anxious. That's where, what's happening. So what does that anxiety feel like? And so go ahead and in the Q&A, share what does that anxiety feel like for you? I know for me, it's like this buzzing sensation within where it's like everything in me is just like vibrating and I get this tingly sensation in my cheeks. My breath starts to get really shallow. It's like my heart. I can actually feel the heart beating in my chest. Um, let's see, what else do we have in, the, in here? Yeah, so worries, um, mistakes. We have, like I'm about to go off a cliff. Yeah, yeah, it can get so, it, can, it feels so intense that it's like you're, you're free falling, you're falling over the cliff or you're right at the edge and you don't, um, know how to make it stop. That's what it can feel like. And it's so helpful for us to know what it feels like for us specifically, because then the more we can attune ourselves to feel it and know, know what it feels like, we can start to catch it before we feel like we're going to, we're already falling down that cliff. We can start to catch it sooner. And what it also gives us the opportunity to do is before we label it anxiety, if we notice the physical sensation, we can say, wait a minute, all that's happening is my heart is beating. I feel on edge. I'm sweating. Those are the physical things. I might be thinking, yeah, this is anxiety, but it also might be excitement. It also might be dehydration. It could be hunger. There's so much of our bio biology needs that can um, physically show up in our body that we then think, oh, I must just be anxious. So we want to start to notice what those symptoms are before we label it anxiety so that we give ourselves the opportunity to decide what we really want to make it be. Okay. So we do have a raised hand in here and thank you. Love the participation. What I'll share is for us to participate today, it's all in the Q&A. So if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A and I am watching it as we go. If I don't get to it right away, it's not necessarily that I haven't seen it, though I might not have seen it yet. I will make sure to, to get to it before we end. Okay. And so we also have, yeah, I get very overwhelmed. Yeah, anxiety can feel overwhelming. And sometimes I think the overwhelm comes from the layering of, ang we feel anxious and then we get nervous about being anxious and then we're sad about being, like we create all of these feelings stacked on top of the anxiety and the anxiety in itself can just start to pull us down. That's um, so good to know what it feels like. So for us to know what it feels like now, we, want, we don't want to stay here. That's why we're on this webinar. We're wanting to feel less anxious. And that's the process of going from where we're at to where we want to go. So let's take a moment now to talk about how we change. Because if we know the steps to change, then we have this overarching guidance. 
And so I'm going to share, there's, there's four steps. We're going to go through this pretty quick so that we can then get right to those strategies. And what I want to offer to you though, is I'm sharing this process of change with you specific to anxiety. You can apply this process to any change you're wanting to make in your life. So if you are somebody who has a new habit you're wanting to start, or maybe one you're wanting to break, this process will work. If you are wanting to show up differently or you have a goal, you want to change in some way, this process will work. So just know this is a universal process that we're applying to anxiety right now. Okay. The first step is awareness. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're doing that now. In this webinar, we're getting more aware. You already got maybe even more aware just as we're learning about where anxiety comes from. But as we continue on, we'll continue to build this. Because we don't just want to know what anxiety feels like. We want to know what we're thinking right before, what specific situations we tend to have those thoughts in, and the way it manifests physically in us. Because the more we know that, the more data that we have, and the more we can uh, influence how we show up moving forward. Okay, the next step, acceptance. Now, I know this is the step that I know for myself, I did not want to hear and did not want to implement. And so let me clarify what I mean by accept. When we're talking about accepting anxiety, we're not saying that you're condoning it or resigning yourself to a life where you always feel anxious. That is not it at all. What we're really saying is that if we're fighting so hard to get to somewhere else, it's like, it's like if I were to say, hey, don't think about a pink elephant. You're focused so hard on trying not to think about a pink elephant that all you can think about right now is a pink elephant because you're resisting the pink elephant. You're like, no, I just, I can't think of the pink elephant. I got to stop thinking of the pink elephant. And then all you think of and all you see is the pink elephant. So that's what happens when we're not accepting of the anxiety. It's like we're gripping so hard to trying to change it and get rid of it and frustrated about that that we just end up holding onto it so much tighter. And so we need to find a way to find acceptance with it. It doesn't mean that we're best buds with our anxiety. It doesn't mean that it rules our life. It doesn't mean that we're the victim to it. All it means is that we acknowledge, hey, this is the part where right now I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling this way because of how I'm thinking. There's some chemicals going on. That's all that's happening. It's okay. I'm not dying, even though sometimes my body tries to tell me I am because of how it feels like we're going off that cliff. That's not what's happening. So I'm okay. That's what we mean when we're talking about acceptance. And we'll be diving into that even more. After that is deciding. Now you're here. So you've probably already decided that you want to change. But we don't want to decide this and try to move forward from a place of resistance. That's why we have to work on the accept piece first. And then after decide is the change itself. And so what that is, is literally just coming into the new you that feels less anxious, calmer, and more in control. All right. So that's what anxiety is and where it comes from. And these are the steps that we are taking to get from feeling the intensity of anxiety we feel now to feeling less of it. So. To, do, to know that, that we need to know how we tend to show up and respond to anxiety. This will build our awareness. And then we're also going to talk about what to do instead. So let's talk about that. There's four of them. The first three are ways that we tend to do that aren't most helpful. And then the fourth is really where the help comes. Okay. So the first way we tend to respond is we fight it. And so what this looks like is that um, voice inside our heads. So for me, my, one of my biggest struggles with anxiety was I would get sleep anxiety. So before any big event, I used to try to go to sleep and I would start to feel anxious and nervous. And then I would get so mad at myself for being anxious and nervous. This voice inside of me would say, what is wrong with you? All you're trying to do is fall asleep. Why can't you fall asleep? You should just be able to fall asleep. Why do you get so nervous about something that's so 
little. This isn't a real problem. This is a stupid problem. You should be better than this. Just fall asleep. And it would just start judging me. And so if this sounds familiar to you, you have that inner critic that comes whenever you feel anxious. It starts to beat you down. It's trying to fight you into not feeling anxiety. It's like you're in this boxing match. It's you or the anxiety and somebody's going to win. And that means somebody has to lose. This also shows up as perfectionism. Now, perfectionism isn't always coming from this, but often it is. And what this is, is it's a, it's a, a different type of fight. It's like the passive aggressive type of fight, right? It's not in your face, but it's, when we're being a perfectionist, it's, it's often us being like, let me just manipulate the situation so everything is just right, so nobody will be upset at me because I did everything perfect, everyone will be happy because I got it just right, and then you don't have to worry about anyone being mad at you or upsetting things or, not, or failing, so you don't have to feel that anxiety because you got it perfect. So it's like a passive-aggressive way um, to fight the anxiety. The next way we tend to respond is we hide from it. This shows up as procrastination. So we don't want to do a task. And so instead we just find other things. We avoid it. We might be watch TV, but it might even be like, oh, I really need to do those chores instead of going to that event that I said I'd go to because the event makes us nervous. But instead we've just decided all of a sudden we really need to do those chores instead. So with with all of these, your brain's going to give you rational, logical reasons for you to be fighting it or hiding from it. But oftentimes, it's just your brain trying to justify you not feeling the anxiety. And so when we hide from it, it's that procrastination to avoid it. And it also could show up as emotional eating or buffering. So if you are nervous about an event and so you just go and you grab the chocolate bar to try to feel a little better. Or there's a wedding and you don't know most of the people and it makes you feel awkward. So you just, you have a glass of wine to take the edge off. It seems harmless, right? You're just having a glass of wine. Let's take the edge off. But here's what happens when we do that. When we drink or have food or do some activity to avoid feeling anxious, what we're telling ourselves is that we don't think we can handle feeling anxiety, that we're not okay, that it's something that has to be avoided at all costs. So when we do this, we actually are training our body to feel anxious in, a, in these events. So if, for instance, you get anxiety about going to, going to a wedding, and so you drink at the wedding, now your brain knows, oh, Okay, when I feel anxious, then I get to drink and I get to numb that feeling. And so once you start to feel anxious at the wedding, if you don't grab the drink, your body's like, huh, it's not working. Why don't we give it some more anxiety here? Maybe that'll work. So you start to train your body to be an anxious person. You're not actually an anxious person, but you're having thoughts that are helping you to feel more anxious to get you to drink the wine to stop feeling the anxiety. And so you create this cycle in yourself where you become at the whim of your anxiety and you start to feel like you're being controlled by it. Okay. The third way we tend to respond is we cling to it. Or another way to put this is we react to it. Uh, there's a steam pot here because what that is, is we have the anxiety and we really buy into it. We believe it. We notice we feel, or we're thinking something like, I don't know if I will show up the way I want to at that networking event. So then we feel a tinge of nerves. Then we notice the tinge of nerves and we go, oh God, now I'm feeling nervous. Oh man, it's really not going to go well. You think that. So what happens? Well, that tinge of nerves grows stronger. We get more anxious and we grow it and we grow it and we start to get overwhelmed. And this is what happens when we have panic attacks. I remember that the idea of a panic attack, it's almost like fear of, of fear, which sounds cool, but it feels terrible <laughs> because you're literally afraid of the fear, which makes you have the very thing you're afraid of. So it's so illogical. We often even know that it's illogical, but that doesn't even matter because it's not 
an, a, a logical based thing. It's an emotional based thing coming from how we're thinking and clinging and attaching to the anxiety because we're so afraid of it. We so aren't wanting to feel it that we end up making it worse. So those are the ways that we tend to respond to anxiety. And I say tend because it's the way that our brain evolved. It's that primitive part of our brain that wants to seek out pleasure, avoid pain, be efficient at all costs. So it does these types of things where uh, it's hiding, it's fighting, it's reacting to our feelings in order to keep us safe. But keeping us safe doesn't always mean keeping us happy, right? And so we survive, but we feel anxious inside over and over and over. And to such intensity that we don't need to feel it. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be that strong. It doesn't have to be in control. So the way to respond instead, and, and we hinted at this earlier, but it's to accept it. And another word that I use for this is to understand it. We want to know how to understand the anxiety. I don't mean dig back into your past, figure out all of the situations that happened and all the things people said to you that made you this way. That is not what I mean at all. You don't have to go into your past in order to feel differently now. If you want to understand what happened there, you're welcome to, but it isn't required. Because what happens often is my clients think, okay, I need to accept and understand this anxiety, so I need to figure out all of these things that went wrong, which just keeps them stuck underneath anxiety. We don't have to know all that. All we need to know is how you're thinking right now. What thoughts you're having creating the anxiety right now. We approach it from that place. And as you do that over and over and over and you gain that understanding and that acceptance, you start to untangle the thoughts within your head and the feelings that you're having and they begin to fall away. You don't even have to try to get rid of it. It literally lets go of you because you've done the work to understand it and not fight it, be afraid of it or hide or cling to it. All right. So then how do we do this? How do we accept it? This is a big question. It's not something we can cover in, in the 30 minutes we have left, but I can offer some specific tools to get us started. So I'm going to share those with you now. That is where we're at, and that's what we'll be using the rest of this time for. I'm sharing six specific strategies, but I don't want you to think you have to go and immediately implement all of them. Because as we know, change starts with awareness and then acceptance. And so just making little tweaks of noticing how you're thinking, noticing what's coming up for you will start to change it. So these strategies will help you do this. And also as humans, we interact the world, with the world on a couple different levels. We have the way we're thinking about it, the way we're feeling about it and what we're doing within it. All of those things come together and create our results for us. So what I've done is I've come up with, um, I've organized these strategies into those three buckets, into what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and what we're doing so that you can start to impact it on all of those levels as well. Okay, so we're going to start with the heart or the feeling center within us. And I like to start there because that's what anxiety is, is it's a feeling. So this first strategy that I'm going to share with you has changed my life. And if you're not sure where to start, this is a great starting ground. So this is the spot. This is the strategy that I would begin with. And what the strategy is called is what feels better. So I have both the two strategies I'll be sharing with you on the slide, but the first one is what feels better. Now, I think the best way to demonstrate this or for you to under, understand how to use it is for me to show it to you. So imagine that you are going to be meeting with your supervisor for your performance review. Now, a lot of times this type of situation might lead us to think things that cause anxiety. So your thought might be, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. So how does that thought feel? Well, for me, if I'm thinking about this performance review and I don't want to go, I feel a sense of dread, which for me is like a, 
a intense type of anxiety. It's a dreading the situation. So I feel dread. So with what feels better, what we're doing is we're not trying to force ourselves to think, I'm excited to go. I want to go. I can do this. We're not trying to force thoughts that don't feel good. Because when we try to force a thought that doesn't feel good, like I'm excited to go, I want to go, when we really don't want to, now what we've done is we've basically tried to paint, it's like that expression, lipstick on a pig. We've tried to pretty up what we're thinking by covering it up with a nicer sounding thought. But just because a thought sounds nice doesn't mean it feels good. And so what this is all about, what feels better is our feelings, getting in touch with how it feels. You don't need to know the exact word to describe it. All you need to know is, does this feel better or worse? So my starting spot, I don't want to go. That does not feel good. Okay. Well, what else? Well, I have to go. Does that feel better? No, that actually feels worse. I don't want to go. I have to go. Feels worse. Okay. So what else? Well, I don't have to, no one's forcing me. Okay, so that feels a little better. And so this is literally like, you could be writing this on a piece of paper, that that's what I'm simulating here. This would be what the process would be. So now we're, I'm thinking, I don't have to, no one's forcing me. That feels a little better. Okay, what else? It's okay that I don't wanna go, feels better. It's not going to be the end of the world. If I go, it's not the end of the world, okay? It's not the end of the world. You know, it could at least be nice to have a chance to talk. It could at least be nice to have that chance. All right, that feels a little better. This way, I'll at least get to see where I stand. That feels even better than just having the chance to talk. Uh, but I might not like what I see. Well, that thought feels worse than at least getting to see where I stand. Thinking I might not like what I see feels worse. That's okay though, we're, we're figuring this out. We're keeping forward. What, what could feel better? Well, it's better to know than not to know. It's better to at least have the knowledge than to be wondering about what's gonna happen. That feels better. You know, and going will give me the chance to know which is a good thing. And I can go, okay? I, you know what, I can go. I may even be surprised by what I discover. I'm looking forward to seeing, looking forward to seeing what happens. So we started with, I don't want to go. And we didn't jump all the way to, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it because that didn't feel real. You take yourself down this path. What feels better? What feels better? So in each step, you're basically looking for relief, relief from the current feeling that you're having, relief that feels just a little bit better. This helps you to get out of an anxious spiral, which happens when we're not monitoring our thoughts or we're just riding the wave, because then it would have been, I don't wanna go, I have to go, I hate this, this is terrible, this is awful, I could lose my job, if I lose my job, I'll lose my house, and we just like go down that road. I've been there. <laughs> it's like when you drive in the car and all of a sudden you're like, what if I get in an accident? That person just braked hard, I was following them so close, my car could flip over. What about my dog? Who's gonna take the dot? Like you just go down this wave. <laughs> This helps to stop that. So it's a great strategy for when you notice the little bit of unease. So, okay, that's where I'm at now. No problem. I hear it. It's because I'm thinking, I don't want to go. How could I find some relief? How could I feel just a little bit better? And that's the way to do it. So that's really accepting where you're at, deciding to look for relief, and then allowing yourself to do that by going through this process. All right, so I love this process. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, I've, it's, you can read more about this in the book by Abraham called Ask and It Is Given. It has a lot in there, more strategies for you as well. Okay, so the next strategy for us to talk about is this tool called Slow and Grow. And this is kind of a funky one. For this, what you wanna do is you wanna do this preemptively. So preemptively and preventatively. <laughs> So what we mean by that is don't do this when you're already feeling anxious. So for slow and grow, what you're going to do is you'll be sitting at a table by yourself and maybe have like five minutes to yourself. And the idea here is 
you want to grow your anxiety and increase your anxiety in the moment. So start from not being anxious at all. So you have maybe five minutes to set aside each day where you do this activity. So you sit and you think, okay, I'm going to give myself one minute. And in that one minute, I'm going to try to make myself feel anxious. Like you're basically imagining that you're injecting yourself with the shot of anxiety. Sounds terrible, but trust me, this can help because what it does is it helps you to see how you're in control. So you set a timer for one minute and you practice making yourself feel anxious. You probably are really good at this already. <laughs> so you'll be really good at this first part. So you practice making yourself feel anxious, which basically means thinking of the worst case scenarios, all of the things that could go wrong, get it to where you really feel the anxiety in your body. You don't need to go to full blown panic, but just practice creating anxiety just for one minute. The timer will go off. Then set it for another minute. And what you're going to do is you're going to practice making yourself feel less anxious. What would I need to think in this moment to feel less anxious? How could I be okay in this moment? How can I refocus and get out of this feeling? Knowing that I'm in control, what could I do to help myself get there? What that does is it helps you to see how you can increase and decrease your own anxiety because you're in charge. And when we can do this in this manufactured setting, you can then apply it to the real world. Because then what will happen is your boss will ask you for some, something and you'll need a quick turnaround in two hours and you notice the anxiety rise and you go, oh, I know this feeling. I've created it for myself on purpose before, which also means I know how to get out of it. Not that I have to get out of it, but I know that I'm in control. So it helps you to see that you are in charge. Okay, so those are the two strategies that I find so helpful when it comes to using feelings as a means to help ourselves feel less anxious. And remember, the key here is we accept it in order to change it. The next place, let's go, is with our, our heads up here. I'm a very analytical person. I often have tried to think my way out of a feeling. But guess what? <laughs> when we already feel a feeling intensely in our body, we can't just think our way out of it. We have to find ways to allow ourselves to be in the moment, which means sometimes we have to get out of our head. That's what those previous strategies can help with. Now, if you aren't to the point where the anxiety is taking over, and not that it ever does, but where you think that that's what's happening, these next strategies about cognition aren't going to help. But these are good ones um, for preventative measures to help you build that baseline where you're the person who no longer feels intense anxiety all the time. That's what we're doing. We're rewriting the script of how you see yourself here. So this first one is called nice to meet you. And I used this for my insomnia. So anyone out there, go ahead, feel free to put it in the chat. Share. Do you tend to get anxiety when you sleep or in the midst of trying to fall asleep? If not, then I'd like for you to think about a situation where you tend to feel anxious. One that consistently comes up, go ahead and put it in the chat and it would just be helpful for us to all see where we're coming from. You won't see other people's chats, but I will share them uh, in the sense that we get an idea. Okay, so I shared sleep. Okay, so we have um, some other ones that often come up are networking events, meeting with the in-laws potentially. Um, those are frequent ones that I see. Job interviews, phone calls, uh, saying no, uh, leading presentations. So those are common ones. So if you have one for yourself, think of what that is. Uh, and you can put that in the chat or you can also just keep it in your own head. Yes, yeah, so we have some others in here. So playing the piano. Yeah, so that is such a good one to notice because it's you go to sit in front of the piano and you feel the nerves because of what you're thinking about it. But for me, it was like walking into the bedroom and seeing the bed. So I'm going to share the nice to meet you process with you now. Uh, and it helps to have a specific example. So I'll use this for sleep. But if it isn't sleep for you, plug in what it is. So if it's the piano, talk about it like it's the piano. Think about it from that lens. And that will help this to come to life for you so you can apply it 
for your own anxiety. Okay, so here's what we wanna do. We wanna think about anxiety as if we are a scientist. We're a scientist out in the field and we're running an experiment. And anxiety is what we're observing. And the anxiety, we're like the scientist observing baboons, okay? So we're a field scientist watching baboons in their natural habitat. We're taking notes, we're observing, we're curious, we're wondering what the baboon is going to do. We're not like trying to shake the baboon into behaving a different way. We're just watching the baboon. We're seeing what the baboon does and doesn't do. We're taking notes. We're curious, we're evaluating. That's what the approach we wanna take with our anxiety. We are the scientist. The anxiety is the baboon. And we're observing and we're in the field. We're doing this, this study, this experiment. So as part of this experiment, we are going to do some interviews with the baboons. So I know baboons don't talk. <laughs> so that it kind of, this uh, example is getting a little lost there, but just imagine you're now gonna have a conversation with the baboon or with your anxiety. So what you wanna do is you wanna start by naming it. You wanna make sure you're talking to anxiety here. So I named mine Annie because I thought it was fun to call it Anxious Annie. It has a fun little flair to it. So I'm talking to Annie and I'm talking about not being able to sleep. For you, it might be playing the piano. It might be going to a networking event. It might be interviewing. So what you wanna do next is you wanna get to know what anxiety sounds like because you wanna make sure you're interviewing the right person, that you're actually interviewing anxiety. So you're sitting down, you have a piece of paper and you could be asking yourself, okay, hi, Annie. Like, what do, what do you tend to sound like? What are some phrases you tend to use? And she says, okay, things, cause I'm talking to her about sleep. She's saying, it's, oh my God, I need to sleep. What if I can't sleep? This will be terrible. My boss will be so disappointed. I won't be able to drive safe. We could die. <laughs> like it goes on and on. All right. I hear you. I know now that I'm talking to anxiety here, it comes, it's clear to me by seeing these thoughts that this is definitely anxiety. Okay. Now I'm talking to anxiety. You then want to ask, okay, so what's your goal, anxiety? What's your goal here? Now, when you ask this question, you're not doing it in an accusatory way because you're that scientist. You're just curious. You're observing. You're curious. You're wondering. What's your goal here, Annie? And what my anxiety told me was to keep me safe. Now, it wasn't necessarily the first response. Often you might need to say what's your goal or why three to five times with yourself in order to get to the main goal. So for me, it was keep you safe. Yours might be the same. It might also be different. Okay. So now I know that my anxiety's goal is to keep me safe. Isn't that great to know? Because guess what? I share a same goal. I also want to keep myself safe. So this helps us to see we are on the same page here. Anxiety is not trying to rule my life in a way where it's trying to take me down. We're on the same team here. So we have the same goal, but a different process, a different way to get there. Anxiety's way is to freak out about it. And she's tried to use that process repeatedly over and over well-intended as she has been, it hasn't worked. And so now what you want to do is you want to thank the anxiety for being there for you. It's not malicious. It's not an evil thing. It's not bad. It's just this character within us, this voice in our head, trying to keep us safe, but doing so in a very misguided way. So we thank it for trying. And then we want to share our new commitment to it. Because when we tell it what we need from it, then it has direction. It gives it a, a place to calm down. So for me, my commitment was, got it. I hear you, Annie. I get it. I want to sleep too. I understand that is so important. And we're on the same page. And I have an idea for a different way to do it. And I know this idea is going to work better. So you can let me drive now. I've got this. I hear you. I hear that you've been concerned, that you've been worried, that you haven't known what to do. And so you've just gotten louder and louder and louder. I get it. And just know I am hearing you. I am on your side and I am taking care of it. 
I've got this. You don't need to anymore. Thank you. Now, this seems kind of maybe a little cheesy, but what it helps us to do is to get to know our anxiety. Because to accept anxiety means to understand it. If I was busy fighting or hiding or getting upset about myself, which is what I was doing before I did this activity, <laughs> um, was I would just get so mad at my anxiety and also react to it. So I'd be panicked and frustrated and I wouldn't sleep for the entire night. But I never understood the deeper reason why. And so by having this conversation, I see the goal. She just wanted to keep me safe. That's it. I want that too. And it helped me to show up from this calmer energy myself so that even though I could be feeling anxiety, and Annie could be there at night. She still was for a while, but I also had this other part of me that had this calm energy that was like, I've got this. It's okay, Annie. I'm not going to make you leave. You're allowed to be here. I'm not going to stop you, but just know I've got this and we're not, we're not going to need to do it your way anymore. And you're just hearing and you're there. And eventually anxiety doesn't come when I sleep. There might be one or two times a month where I feel it, but never like before. And it never stops me from falling asleep. And it's all started with this process here. So that has been a game changer for me. And so I wanted to offer it to you. It's a little clunky and a little weird to do on your own. So if you want help doing this, I suggest you sign up for that consultation call. We won't be able to do it on the call, but I'll share with you how we can do that together so that you can get the tools that you need. Okay. So we have some more to go over and I want to make sure that we have time to do it. So we're going to move right on to the next, but please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can put them in the Q and A. I am watching it. All right. So we are going to the decision maker hat. What this is, is practicing making decisions. Because when we are somebody who defines ourselves as an anxious person, we start to lose trust in ourselves. We second guess ourselves, we doubt ourselves, we don't have our own backs. So not only do we feel anxious, but we often lack self-trust. And I often find anxiety and a lack of self-confidence, I mean, they really go hand in hand. So what this does is by reminding ourselves that we're in charge, we show ourselves that we can trust us because we honor our own decisions. So decision maker hat means that you start making decisions for yourself. I know it's going to feel really uncomfortable, especially if you've been somebody who likes to ask 15 people to read an email before you send it. I used to often read an email if I couldn't share it with somebody over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> it took me five times the length it needed to take to send the email because of all of the anxiety instead of trusting my own gut. So what we want to do is we want to build that trust within ourselves to trust our own gut and have our own back. The way to do that I find is to start with littler decisions. So if somebody wants to go out to dinner with you and they say, where would you like to go? And you think, I don't care. And you really don't care. It doesn't matter. Pick something, just decide. I would like to go here. Make the decision. Because the more you do that, the more your brain goes, oh, okay, we have a voice here. We care what we think. We have ideas. And so you make decisions, you show yourself that your opinion matters, it's valid, and it creates that trust within you. And when you trust yourself, you start to doubt less within yourself. It's not like you never doubt again, but you have a sense of calm within you because you know you have your back no matter what. So it helps you to make these decisions to help you get to that place. Okay, let's move on to the last set of strategies, which are ones that we do. Now, I think these can be really helpful. It also, I would recommend to not just do the two strategies I'm about to share with you that are about your body because it's somewhat of a symptom management type of thing. They help, they really do, but we wanna get to the root cause. And that's the approach I take with my coaching as well. It's causal coaching meaning we want to get to the source of what's happening, not in the sense of going all the way to the past, 
Because sometimes when we re-explain, 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 and we go to our past over and over and over, we just use it as more evidence for how we can't get better. So it's not that. It's more so how to understand the cause in this moment right now. Okay, so that's why I don't recommend only doing these two strategies I'm sharing with you now, but I still want to share these so you have them for your tool belt. So the first one, shake it off. It's like Taylor Swift's song. You just shake it off. So what this is, is if you have a big event or you're about to give a presentation to your boss or whatever it might be, put yourself in a room where you can be in privacy and you just shake out the anxiety. Because we talked about how feelings are that vibration in your body. And it's like that chemical is being released. You have the vibration in your body. So if you literally shake out the vibration, you just shake your body in all different ways. I can't really do it sitting, but you just shake everything out. You'll notice the energy release and you'll feel calmer. All right. And the next one that I want to share is breathe it out. Breathe it out is a technique. It's it, the, uh, I got this from a Navy SEAL. I didn't literally get it from the Navy SEAL. It, a Navy SEAL developed this concept. And what it is, is it's this four, 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 four breathing technique. So you do this when you're already so in your anxiety. Like if you're at panic or edge of the cliff, this is a good time to do this. And it's just breathing in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. So one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. And the reason we do this is our breath is kind of like a conduit between our thoughts and our physiology. Because when we feel anxious, our, our blood or our, we, we breathe more shallowly, shallowly, which um, means that there's less oxygen in our blood. We breathe more shallow and our body also goes into fight or flight, which means it shunts the blood flow from our extremities, which means our hands, our feet, and our head. So if you've ever blacked out um, before uh, something that makes you nervous because you're so nervous, you just literally can't think, not blacked out. I mean, blank out. <laughs> That's what I mean. If you've blanked out before something, it's often because your body was in fight or flight, shunted the oxygen away from your head so that you could run. But you often don't need to run in an interview. <laughs> Probably not what you're looking to do. So by breathing, it reoxygenates your blood, which helps to get you able to think again, which is why when you're so in the anxiety, breath work is often what therapists, psychologists, people will recommend. This is a great symptom management tool. It is not an end-all tool to help you uh, get to the cause of the anxiety. Okay, so those are the strategies. And again, the goal here isn't that you apply all six of these right now, but it's that you now have tools that you can use to feel less anxious. And if any of this resonated with you and you are wanting to feel less anxious, maybe you've been thinking about it for a little while, but you haven't known how to start and you haven't known what's been missing. You don't know what the process is. Then you need to get on a consultation call with me because what this is, it is a one hour call and it is free. And this call we dive into your brain, which means we talk about what is working for you, what isn't working, what you've tried to manage your anxiety, and why it hasn't worked. Oftentimes, we think we know why it hasn't worked, but we're so caught in our own head that we don't know the real issue. We don't see the deeper cause. So getting on this consultation call with me will allow us to dive into your brain, and we won't in one hour, be able to uncover everything that's going on. But what we will be able to do is to see some of the patterns. And when you have the awareness of the patterns, your brain goes, oh, that's what's been happening. Now I get it. I see it. And when your brain sees it, it is so important. It is one of the most important things you can do for yourself because it's never going to want to go back. It's never going to want to do it any differently. And so that is why this call is so helpful. It gives you that chance to see what some of those patterns are. Now, we don't want to stop there, though, because you don't just want to know what you've tried and why it hasn't worked. You want to know what to do next, right? And so you on the call will get a foundation 
of takeaways that you can apply to your life. Now, this will be a simple foundation because oftentimes our brain wants to complicate things more than is necessary. But often the simplest answer can be the right answer. It's just simple doesn't always mean easy. So what we want to do is we want to help you be able to implement these strategies, the ones on this webinar and also the ones that we identify on that consultation call. So on the call, you'll get some takeaways that you can apply. But you also might be wanting some support to help you make it easier for yourself to feel less anxious. And so on the call, we'll also talk about how we can work together to help you feel less anxious. So if this is resonating, if you're wanting to feel less anxious, if this is something that you have been struggling with and you're wanting a change, this call can help. So to sign up, you go to www.lisaphilia.com schedule. The screen there has the link and you'll see how you can sign up for a consultation. This call is the way for you to start feeling less anxious. A lot of times people won't sign up because they think it's just going to take a lot of time. It's going to take time to feel less anxious, time that I don't have, and so they don't even give themselves the chance to get started. But what if it doesn't have to take a long time? What if on this call you get even just one little thing that moves you forward to feeling less anxious? Because change is that process. And just because you're not going to go from feeling raging anxiety to no anxiety overnight doesn't mean that you can't get to the place where you know how to manage your anxiety. And it comes with the steps that you're taking. And the first step can be to get on this call with me and we can dive into your mind so that you can leave with specific solutions to help you with your anxiety. So go ahead, use the link on the screen. It's www.lisaphilia.com slash schedule, and it's free. It offers you steps to your mind, your brain, and it will help you determine if coaching makes sense, if that is the next step that makes sense for you to help you with your anxiety. All right, so that's what I have for you. We are at uh, pretty much the top of the hour. If you do have any more questions, feel free to put them in the q and I'll hang out for another minute uh, so that I can address whatever those questions might be for you. So I do want to leave you with just knowing the bottom line from this whole webinar is that anxiety is just a feeling, a vibration in your body. And this is so important for us to know because that means it is harmless. It only becomes a problem when we make it into something bigger. And when we make it into something bigger, we grow it. These strategies from this webinar will help you to feel less anxious by helping you to understand that anxiety so you can feel less of it. And if you are ready to feel less anxious and you're ready to get specific to your brain, what's happening for you in your head, then sign up for that free call with me. You can do so with the link on the screen. All right, I don't see any questions coming in, so I will wrap us up here. Thank you so much for your time. It's been wonderful working with you and seeing you there. And remember, you are in charge. All right, thank you. Bye.